We on? Good evening, friends. I'm Jose. This is Ben and Luke. And welcome to another installment of Let's Talk About Ice, coming at you live from Coffs Harbour. Tonight, we have a show for you, and we're going to unpack two things. Um, yes, this is a Let's Talk About Ice show, and we're going to talk about, first of all, the self-centeredness of an ice addict. And then, after the first half, we're going to flick that around, and we're going to talk about God-centered recovery. I know, I know, me, some of you will say, God, I don't want to, I don't want to, God is that, oh, it shouldn't be part of this show. And perhaps some of you watching tonight will be turned off, and I pray that you don't, because if you're watching the show tonight, maybe you have received that gift of desperation, that you don't know what to do and you want answers. And maybe you have a friend or a family member who is suffering from ice addiction and you've run out of ideas and you don't know what to do. All we ask from you tonight are two things, open-mindedness and willingness. There's something that the three of us do know and that's how to get ongoing recovery. I've been clean almost five years now and Ben and, and Luke's been in this program for quite a while. Um, but before that, I just have some housekeeping. Um, first up, um, don't forget our hotline. So if you or someone you know suffering from, from ice addiction, please call our hotline and you need help. 1-800-NO-2-ICE or 1-800-66-423. Um, other housekeeping, we just want to extend, uh, acknowledge some of our sponsors. Uh, first one is Mercer Cooper Realty in the Gold Coast. The next one is Get M Signs Signages, who helped our Gold Coast office for, for, the, for, for the signage. Uh, Grilled Harbor Town, please put your tokens at the AAIC jar when you, when you visit that restaurant. Um, also want to promote the Ride Against Ice, which is, will be held on the, Octo on the 24th of October at Meakin Road, Kingston, Queensland. Uh, for more details, please check our Facebook page. We will have an op shop opening soon in the Gold Coast, so keep, you know, check our Facebook page for that as well. Uh, for Coffs Harbour, we want to again acknowledge the sponsors here, or, or, or our partners in community, the Rotary Club Daybreak, who, uh, and thank you again for your recent donation, the Rotary Club Coffs Harbour and the Salvation Army. Uh, who are our partners in our efforts in the community and uh, the facility we use for this show. Also want to acknowledge um, the usual, the gentleman, Matt Miller, who helps us with the technical side of things. And there's also another gentleman here who's also in recovery, and is, is Mohammed. Good evening. Maui. And also, um, we also want to acknowledge um, a very important part of the Coffs community, and we all have gone through and that's their Dell House, their Dell House program. And, um, you know, it, it, they, have, they have just opened the brand new facility up there in, in Bucca. And um, we have got a guest tonight, and his name is, I'm going to give Ben, and Ben will introduce him yeah, to hi, you. Thanks, Jose. Um, yeah, so I'm Ben, um, and it's good to be here. Um, just, I want to uh, acknowledge our last um, broadcast and the response we got from that. So, that was good. There's obviously people out there that um, are seeking that help. Um, it, if they're not directly affected, it, it, maybe it's a loved one. So um, we're going we're gonna to talk openly and honestly, and we're going to um, uh, give you that help and guidance if you need it, or you can pass on to a family member. And that's the whole idea behind the anti Australian Anti-Ice Campaign, is to help those in, um, in ice addiction and to help them free, free from that, that, that slave of, of um, ice, that insidious drug ice. Um, all us boys up here on the, on the um, podium, podium we've, um, we've been in ice addiction, so we understand what uh, um, that, that life is like. And <clears throat> we're here to share our experience um, and our, um, our difficulties and, and, and our overcomings as well. Um, in, in, in this journey. So, um, first, I'd like to thank, um, I'd like to introduce Luke. Um, this is Luke. Luke's been through the, um, the Adele House um, program um, and he's here today to, to share his experience. Um, 
And um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just ask you, where are you from, Luke? Uh, hey, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Um, I'm from uh, Western Sydney. Yep. Um, so I lived there pretty much all my life. And then um, I got in my way, yep. started using because of boredom, compensation, well, I injured at work. Yep. So I started using, got pretty bad. How old were you when you first started? Uh, I didn't. I didn't pick up any drugs till I was about twenty-four. Right. So yeah, in, in a sense, you're, you're late coming into the into the ice scene, and I guess um, you know that's that's when it started to take off around that time, which is what. You, you, how old are you now, Luke? I'm thirty-five. Yeah, and, and that that's right. That that sounds about right. That's when that that ice started taking off. So yeah, um, tell us a bit more um, how you how you were introduced to, to ice and how that come about into a an addiction. Um, I was I was hanging around with certain people, right? And what happened was is I got introduced to speed. Yep. And then I got introduced. Oh, this is smokable base. Yep. Which then later I. I seen it wasn't, it was eyes, and that's how my addiction started. Right. And, and I guess it, uh, it's the same sort of story as everyone. It, it probably started off as a recreational sort of thing at, at the beginning. Um, yeah, it did. And then, then it, it, it progressed into a, a full-blown addiction, I imagine. Yeah, it did. It went from just weekend use yep. to everyday use. Yep. Um, depending on it and living life. Only about drugs. Yeah, you know. and and can are you able to tell us where, where that um, that that um, addiction led led to you? Did did did, did you did you have um, uh, did it did it um, involve law the law? So my addiction involved psychosis. Yep. Um, two, uh, three stints in jail. Right. Bec- because of the addiction. Right. Before that, when I was clean. I was always a law abiding, but going to the ice, actually, I didn't care anymore. Yep. I didn't have any type of care about anything. Yep. Yeah, and I guess that that that's what happens. Um, and and that that um, that that's basically the crux of today tonight's show is to, to talk about that um that self centeredness. You know, um, so we, we we're not we're not we're not caring about um our loved ones, those who we're hurting and, you know, these people in our lives, you know, relationships, family and whatnot, um, you know, we're just continuing down that that, that, um, that path of destruction just in order because we're, we're, um, we're controlled by this drug. And so, um, you know, I guess that, that's where it's going to end up for everyone in this addiction because... It, it, it's a it's a it's a journey that continues to get worse and worse and gather that momentum and and like you say, that end result, um, like in jail. Um, so. Yeah, that's right. The end result, you do end up in jails or an institution where it's a mental home yeah. because of this uh, chemical imbalance in your brain. Yeah. It just makes you go psycho. You you just have no fear. Yeah. yeah. Or death even. Or death even. Yeah. yeah. And you know that's that's happening. The case um, you, you hear it from time to time. So and so's where they've gone into a deep depression. Yeah, and that's ended, right. Ended their lives, you know, and yeah, it's pretty sad. Or done something stupidity to do that. Yeah, that's right. Many times we watch the um, let's talk about ice ice show, um, and you know, I, I guess uh, from my I've, I've seen the that that story of, of going to prison um, has been flogged so many times, and what I really want to. I think tonight, it's, it's, let's focus on, on one of this trait, an ice addict, and we are so self-centered, you know, and, and, and because of that, you know, we've r- ruined relationships. Um, and, 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 and people who try to help us, you know, because we're so self-centered, we go self-sabotage, we sabotage all those things. So why don't we look into those Things and, and, and let's talk about that. How, give us an example. How were you so self? How were you self-centered in, in addiction? Uh, self-centered was I didn't I didn't care what I did as long as I had my hit each day. I didn't care about anyone else. You know, my, I, I've got three kids. My first partner, I, I thought it was her. Then I went on to my next partner. 
and I thought it was her and her family, but it wasn't. It was it was me, because I, I was so selfish. Yeah, and I, I can I can um, that resonates with me too. That story. I n n it's not now that I'm living a sober life, and I can reflect on that life I was living, that I can be accountable for my actions. Whereas when you're in that actual addiction, you you don't think you're as bad as what you are, or you, you think it, you know it's them, and you know. Um, you, you make excuses, I guess, and um, and I, I guess it's not until you really stop and you, and you can reflect and you need to uh, and be honest with yourself. That's that's the key, being honest with yourself, and and and, and say, look, yeah, I, this is the part I played in um, you know in in you know this dysfunctional um, relationship that I was having, and and unfortunately, you know, children can can be involved in this sort of thing, and and it is, it's a it's a real selfish sort of um, display. Uh, um, you know, of your needs over, you know, if there's children involved or a uh, family and that. I, 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 I do carry a bit of guilt. Um, I don't have um, uh, children, but um, just with um, regards to my family, you know, I've got a loving family. I've got a good mother and, um, you know, from, from what I've put her through. And, it, and it, you know, I said last um, uh, show, she actually thought she'd lost her son. And she actually had, and, and what the hardest part for her, she had to step away from me a bit because I was out of control. And now I, I have to live with that fact. And you know, I know my mum. She, that's the last thing she'd ever want to do. And the the fact that I put her through that, you know, um, it's it's a difficult thing to to to, um, to have to um, deal with. But you know. The person I am now, you know, it, it's, you know, she's so much happier for me and, um, you know, I, I can only just um, try and be the best I can be um, and, and you know, we, 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 we make mistakes in life but we can't be um, live in that, you know, in that, in, in that past. Oh, yeah. let's, let's get more into specifics, right? I, I have a, a very good friend who's also in recovery and... and, um, and and he used to share uh, about in in addiction, right? He would dig up old nappies from the garbage bin, right, and reuse that. Even though his his baby, his kids will end up having rashes, right? That's the reality of, of an ice addict. Do you have a similar story like that? That I want to get nitty gritty and of, of examples. Um, and there's people watching this in the show, and they're gonna, it's going to resonate. That story is going to oh, yeah, I do that. Oh, yeah, my, my, my brother does that. So, so say, for example, my son had a dirty nappy. I would just leave him in it pretty much half the day. Yeah. You know, because I was too worried about kicking back, smoking, yeah. smoking yeah. you know. And I look back on that now, and I've got – I hate it. Yes. I hate myself for yes. it. You know, and then – my, like food wise, I'd never neglect them with breakfast, but lunchtime comes, I was off my face, so I didn't really care, you know, and I feel bad for that now. A, a full blown ice addict, the, the driving force of our life is, is to get the money to score the drugs and for our next hit. And we really don't care about it. I, I, I'll give an example. I, I, I was, um, a few years ago, I was sitting in, in Parkley Prison, you know, and at that point, my, my family really didn't didn't want to know me. But um, one day I was in Parkley, Maine, and, and I see my name in the visits list. And uh, I looked into it and I found out that it was my mother. And my mother lives, oh, she has to catch a public transport, and she was almost 70 at this point. So she had to travel two hours from where she lived to get to Parkley Prison. And I don't get any visit, but you know what? I don't, I didn't even want to see her. You know why? Because I was in Parkley Prison in Maine, I was too busy trying to score ice from other inmates. And I, was, I would rather sit in the cell smoking ice rather than go and see my mother, who was 68, who had to travel two hours to get to Parkley. And I had to turn her away. They had to turn her away. And I said, no, I'm sorry, but your son didn't come out to visit, to, to meet you. You know, that's, that's the reality of it. Mm, yeah. That, that's right, you know, um, and like I say, you don't realise that until you, you know, you, you think, oh, I'm not that, you know, it's, it's not as bad as what you think at the time, but um, when you stop and you reflect and you look back on these things, you, you know, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow at times, you know, um, but, 
yeah, and all, all we can do is, is share that story with the, with the, the, the viewers. Um, and I'm sure there's people out there listening uh, right now. They can um, resonate with um, what's being said. You know, there, there might be other stories um, that um, that they that, that they've gone through as well. But um, you know, it, it, this drug, it, it is. It's um, it's all about me, 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 me. You know. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it'll start off with the, um, you know, finding the money or, you know, you're putting yourself, your, your life at risk or whatever, to, you know, you could be stealing or whatever and then, and then getting on, getting that actual fix. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a horrible cycle and, um, you know, th those, if you can break that cycle, do it s sooner rather than later because... It's one of them things. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And whatever you think in your head at at, at the moment, that, oh, it's not too bad. It, it, you know, it, it is. It, it really is. So, um, you know. But what we're offering out there is um, is uh, people to change their way, uh, change their their way of thinking. I, I guess you know, um, uh, change their outlook on life. Um, because I, I know what it's like. I've been there before, and, 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 and I've, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to overcome this addiction, and you know, there's people around you, and 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 you're you're suffering, and and you're trying to help the world, and you know, you can't even help yourself. So, um, and I guess that's where our, um, our that that Christian-based um, belief, and 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 what we're going to talk about tonight is. Um, you know that 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 transforming the way you're thinking. So um, this could resonate with people that are have um, been in addiction and they've relapsed, and they're they're looking for a way to 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 um, to overcome that. Um, this might be a new method or a new way of um, looking at things and a new way of going about how they can um, over, overcome this addiction. You said you went to prison before, and you've got two kids as well. How did that affect your that's your relationship with your, with your, with your family. Give, okay. Um, give, give us a bit more of, of, of okay. your story. Because there has to be... It must, have, it must be very bad. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here today. Why, why, would, why would we change our life to what it is now? So tell us how bad it got. <laughs> okay. So my, my first time around, I was on um, ice for about two years. And then I'd done a custodial sentence and I lost my um, partner and my first child. When you say lost, as in? She broke up with me. Okay. Yeah, left me and said, you're nothing but a junkie, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, So you're whatever. a junkie? I'm running my own race. You're running I'm, your own I'm, race. I'm doing my own thing. Yeah. Like, just smoking drugs all the time. Not giving a sh care about anyone else in the world but myself. Yeah. You know, I was very selfish. And, and how, how old was your, was your... I was 26 at the time. And your, your, your son or daughter? Um, my son was only two. Was only two? Was only two. Okay. And then okay. <clears throat> I come out of custody so after... You have you had hostages in your addiction? Yes, pretty much yeah? so, yeah. Yeah. And then I come out of my addiction, uh, come out of jail. After only seven, four months, I got on bail. And then she came back to me, so I thought I was okay. Started hanging around the same crowd again, and I started blaming other people for me going back there. But in reality, it was me. Yes. It was my choice. I wanted to take drugs. Yes. You know, no one else can do it. And I've only come to that realization now. Mm. So, and then I ended that relate. Well, that relationship went sour. Like finished up. Couldn't couldn't resolve it because I went back to that life. Did you have a job? Were you working? No, I was on comp compensation. Compensation? Yeah. Okay. So I had an income. You had an income? Which supported my habit. Supported your habit? Yeah. But why, were you, why did you go... Uh, how come you ended up in prison? Um, because one night I was out with a few boys and um, they go, oh, this guy, like, this guy um, said something wrong or something. So you like were off that. your head? I was off my face. Yeah. Okay. They were off their face yeah. and we assaulted him. So we all went to jail. Under the influence of drugs, of, of, of eyes, and you, you think you're Superman. And yes. That's exactly right. So, um, and obviously that... That sort of woke me up, but didn't wake me up. 
because I went back down that path. Mm. Then I found a new partner and then, oh, sorry, yeah, I done a, found a new partner three months before I'd done my sentence for the yeah. assault. Okay, so you, you, you have, you broke up with other relationship, you're in a new relationship, so what did you bring into that new relationship? The, uh, cell, the same? The same stuff. The same you? Yeah, the same me. The same you. I didn't okay. change. You didn't change. So, so when, when you actually, you, you, um, the, that night when the, the, the assault happened, I guess, did it, did it occur to you uh, this could affect other people, you getting incarcerated or anything like that? Or you, you weren't cons- Because were you were in the care, were there, was there kids involved in your life at that time? Yeah, my kids were involved. My, my eldest son was involved in my life at that time. And I had no care for anyone but so, running a mark. So, and you, you've, you've, this incident's happening, and you, you, and you know, um, I guess that that's what keeps a lot of us in line. You know, that are of a sober mind. That um, you know, if I get put in jail, who's going to look after my family? But you know, it'd be fair to say, in an ice addiction, you know, you don't care. I had no care in the world. Yeah. Didn't think of the consequences. Just sort of yeah. having that thrill of running a mark. Yeah. And I guess it's the same with, um, you know, if you, you know, people with jobs and that sort of thing. That if they they got the addiction, they're not caring what they're doing, and and ultimately they lose jobs. You know, or, you know that things go get out of control. That whatever supports their life and and um, and and is um, causes them to be a functioning family is in jeopardy because of this this um, addiction. Yeah, that's right. Whatever you've got. And once you hit addiction, and you, your addiction gets that bad, you start to lose everything yeah. that you've actually worked towards for yeah. being sober. Including your loved ones. Yes. Yeah. One of the things about being self-centred is that there, there are people, there are people that will actually help you. Uh, I'll, give you I'll give you a story. I, um, it was in early 2010, 2011, I was finishing a two-and-a-half-year sentence, and um, I was at... I was at prison in, in Sydney. I'm not going to mention the, the, the name. Um, but I, I, I had an opportunity to become the, the head clerk, right, of, of one of the industries. And, you know, do you think I'll take that opportunity with, with open arms and, 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 and try to, to change? No. No, what, what I actually did was um, use that position there. And, and last week, Jaron talked about drugs in prison. You know, I was sitting in Parkley Prison and... and um, in the office where I'm working, I'm hiding the drugs there. Mm. Yeah? And that's the reality. Of, of, of we, we, we sabotage and, and we take advantage of people who try to help us. Mm. And when, I remember the time when I finally got released from the lagging, my boss, who was a, 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 who was the um, corrective services, who was very hard, tried to help me, actually got me a job, got me a job with one of the suppliers in, in prison. It was a perfect opportunity for me to change my life. Right? And all I had to do was turn up that day. For, you know, did I turn up? No, I didn't turn up. You know why? Because um, I was too busy smoking ice. Mm. Right? And um, I, I had a presence of mind to ring up. And I said, look, I'm sorry, but I'm, my car broke down. Can we reschedule this until two days later? And then the next day, of course, I just didn't ring up anymore. Um, and that's the reality of it. We're so self-centered. We're prone to self-sabotaging and sabotage everyone around us. Mm. Um, and I'm sure you guys well, have, have, have stories similar to that. Definitely. I, I, I had a job on the mines. So I was on big money um, at one stage of my life. And, um, and I guess that, that's where my opportunity to start, start um, actually um, dealing drugs um, started from. And um, I, was, I was on the mines for a couple of years. Um, and you know we make big money. We we do three three week stint, and then we come home for a week. Um, and that uh, that three week stint gives us about eleven thousand dollars in our hand. Um, but I quit that job to to become to become a, a dealer, and I, I was actually making more money than that. And that, that that's how I justified it. But a, a life dealing and a, and a life using it's not sustainable. You know you, you it's not. It's not going to last forever, and um, and at the end of my drug use, I was um, living in a, um, a shipping container. So you know, I, I had it. I had it. You know, the, the good job, and I had I had everything that I, I, I'd worked hard for, and you know, I threw it down the drain. And you know, it might have been good for you know six months, you know, wheeling and dealing, but you you live big, 
and, and you make big, you spend big. And, you know, it's hard and fast, but um, like I say, it's not... There's no long-term there. And, you know, you, you can... Um, <laughs> I'd like to know that the percentage of people that really do benefit out of all this, because it, you know, who, those who, who get into this and think they're going to start a life of dealing and that, you're kidding yourself. And, you know, um, I wasn't just a street dealer. I, I was, I was uh, up there a bit, but... You know, it, it, it's it's a dog eat dog world. It's and and you, you know you're going to end up in jail or dead. So you, you've lived in a shipping container. What about you? Um, so I've been I was on compo for many years from an MVA, and I've had like job opportunities come my way, and m my mind was, no, it's all right. I've got a compo. I'll be right. You know just stay on the drugs and live a, live a bludger's life, you know, not actually benefit my life. Mm. And I ended up homeless, mm -hmm. living out of my car because my mum walked away from me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was living at my mum's mm -hmm. and my, my last partner walked away because I was on drugs. The sad thing about um, the mentality of an ice addict is that we only remember, <laughs> we only remember the good times when we're off. Uh, we never remember the bad times. We only remember all the times we spent in hotels and, you know, and the great accommodation, the sad realities. And, and, and now that I have a, a, a mental clarity, I can tell you exactly the moments I've slept in, on park benches. Mm. I can tell you exactly the times when I walked into Woolies at Strathfield or Burwood and opened the packets and ate food along the aisle, biscuits and whatever I can lay my hands on because I didn't have money. And then I have to run away and security have to chase me. But you will never hear me talk about that in, mm. in, in prison or, or when I'm talking with other ice addicts. I'm only talking about how great the road was mm. and how much mm. money I made. But the, 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 the fact is, we've all been there, the homelessness, the, yeah. the times when we don't have food. Um, mm. I, I acknowledged the presence before of my very good friend, um, Afros, who's here tonight, you know, and I'm very familiar with his story. He's, he's done the, 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 the program and he, he did very well, got a good job and we're earning good money. But fortunately, he, he, he picked up and, and, and what happened after that is, that, you know, he, he wrapped his car head on collision with, with a truck. And, and, and fortunately, thank God, he's, he's here today to, 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 to testify about what actually happens when you decide to pick up. Um, yeah, like you say, Jose, you, you don't hear about the, um, the, the, the the depression or the come down or, you know, you, you're sitting in jail cells. Um, unfortunately, I had a friend who was, he was my best mate and he, he, he took his life. And um, the sad thing is I, I could help him now, but back then I couldn't help him. Um, and... You know, I miss him. I miss that guy. He was my mate. Um, and I just, I, you know, I wish, I wish I could had a, had something like this. I, I wish I could have had that, that chance to, to, to point him in the right direction. So, I mean, I guess if anyone is hearing this message um, and, 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 and there is people out there that you're concerned about, pass that message on. If, if you are that person, um, listen to what we're saying because... Um, you know, there's no gain out of this for us to to tell you um, this big story, and this is this is the reality of this drug. You need to you need to um, deal with it, and you, and and the sooner you you, you overcome the or you you get, um, put the process into um, uh, um, overcoming this drug, the better because it's only going to get worse. Um, so I, I guess the message here is like, when it comes to ice, don't even play around with it, not even once. No. Right. Not even once. Um, I I never dreamed to become to become an, an an ice addict, you know. But I tried that drug for the first time, and I guess the point of this forum is to tell you exactly where ice is going to lead you. Um, we all have different backgrounds, mm -hmm. and um, and at the end of the day, it it is it it, it changes you, you know, into that very definitely yeah. self-centered person. Um, and you don't care. Um, I never cared about the time when, when police actually raided my my mum's house, and I didn't even live there. You know, um, I I didn't care about about the times when I stole money from my family. Mm. 
I didn't care about the, the time, so I borrowed money and said, I'll pay you tomorrow, and then mm. they won't see me again. Yeah. You know? Uh, and it, it's really all about me. Me. And me. And, and th th this person that we talk about, um, you know, <laughs> when you first start, you, you, you say, uh, you know, you, you, I, I'm not like them, or I won't become like that, or I, I wouldn't do that, or, you know, I wouldn't rip that person off, and I'm, I'm a good person. In the end, you become that person you 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 didn't like, and and you forget you, you lose yourself. You forget who you are, and I mean, I mean, you you can vouch for that, Luke. Um, yeah, again, your morals go out the window. There's no there's no care factor anymore. You just it's all all you want to do is just feed off what your addiction's doing to you. The 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 addiction your addiction is all about you, nobody else. No matter how close they are to you, family, friends, auntie, um, partner, kids, whatever, you're just going to care about yourself. And it's, it's the worst drug you could ever take. And so, you, you know, the, the, we're focusing on um, the, the self-centeredness. And, and that's, that's, that's um, it's one of these things from this drug that you can expect. But, um, and, you know, we had um, tea earlier and we were talking with each other about, so what is my purpose in life, you know? Is it to go around and rip people off and look after me, 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 me? Um, you have to ask yourself, is that, that what I was put on this earth to do? Was I put here to, to um, use drugs and, and, and just, um, you know, um, consume everything around me and, and not care? Um, and the, the answer, of course, is it, it's not that. It's not that. Yeah, that's right, Ben. Good, 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 good points. And why don't we flick that around, right? So we, we all know how bad we got. We, we were bad, we we're bad people. And I was, most, I was all high addicts to tell you that, yeah, um, we are the lowest of the low, and that's the reality of, of our life. So let's flick that because we are not those people anymore, right? We, we are people that have been transformed. Now I'm going to use a, um, a, a biblical quote, and I. Some of you may not like it, but it's very appropriate, right? And it says this, it's in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 24 to 25. It says, so God said, in effect, if that's what you want, that's what you get. It wasn't long before they were living in a pig pen smeared with filth, filthy, inside and out. And that's what our life was. Yeah? yeah? Um, that's what you want to, you want to worship drugs, you want to follow drugs instead, of, instead of, 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 of values, morals and principles? Yeah. And this is what exactly you'll get. You'll get. You will live a life that's filthy. You're like living in a pig pen, smeared with filth, inside and out. And all of this happens because you've traded, you've traded your principles, values, values and morals. Your you've, you've traded the principles of, of, of true God with that fake, which is, which is drugs. So let's talk about, okay, so we're in what we call journey to recover. We're, we're people who have recovered from this ice addiction. And there's got to be more to life than just... Yes, I, I took drugs before, and I don't take drugs anymore. So, but what does that mean? What does that mean to you today? So, to me today, um, it all started last year when the fires happened. Um, I was uh, just hanging around, doing my own thing, volunteering for the Salvation Army on the truck. And then uh, the fires started, so the, there's a um, Salvation Army emergency service. I, was, I became a part of that and went... To the, uh, the first fire I went to was... Um, Glen, Glen Innes? Or? Glen Innes, that's the one. And that's where I met Luke. Yeah, yeah Glen Innes was the first fire. I went up there, thought, all right, this is easy. But it was one of the biggest eye-openers you could ever have. Having fireys come in there, bugged, exhausted, not knowing what they're doing, they just wanted to feed so they could put their head down because they'd been doing shifts 12 hours, even 14 hours, some of them. And there was over 400 fireys we were feeding each night and, and lunch, you know. Then wow. th those fires went away. Then we went to our, nec our next stint was Port Macquarie. So, but, you know, let me just interject here. You were this ice addict who was so self-centred, right, whose driving force is to get – what, what were you doing last year? You, you volunteered. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I volunteered. So – the, the bushfires were, were very bad in New South Wales, yes. right? So, and, and, and when you say Salvation Army, what, what, what were you actually doing? Like, so, 
um, we would feed the fireys. Wow. And cook for them. Wow. We would do two shifts a day. So there would be a morning crew and then there would be an afternoon crew. And what I did was is I would, I'd go to Adele House, which had helped me and showed me the right from wrong mm -hmm. and gave me a, everything I know now. Yes. You know, and so I went back there because I thought I seen it was a very good eye opener. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought those boys who were in recovery, in early recovery, yes. to take them up there and give them an eye opener. And I did that. Yeah, and, and I included Ben as well. Yes, as one of them. Yes, and it was the biggest eye opener for any of us. Wow! And how how long was this? Uh, how, how long uh, were you the, out there for? Glen Innes was about about a week. We were up there, but we we you came back and and you had a rest, and then you went back up. Didn't yeah, you? I was about, I was up there for about four weeks, yeah. back and forth from wow. here. So so what's happened here is we we've gone from um, from um, being takers essentially and and now we're giving back to the community and th that's that's what we've done up there and we also went to the the Kempsey fires um i'm proud to talk about that and that's something that i, I you know I, I'm, I'm 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 glad that i did you know that i was able to to give back and and offer my services to those in need um so um and, and it's the complete opposite of you know what what we were doing um you know, take, 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 and then just, um, you know, consume everything around us. So, um, yeah, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, to be able to give back and, 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 and be of service to people, it's a far more rewarding um, feeling. So. You know, as I say, if people think that they've got a bad life, like, or an addict sits there and says, oh, what about me? It's all poor me. Why don't they just go have a look when the, like, this is how I look at it. Mm. Like when these people are coming to us, like when we were in Campsie, we'll actually feed in evacuees. Mm -hmm. And they've lost their homes and it was very sad, you know, mm -hmm. because yeah. Yeah. they would come in and tell us, tell us their stories. Mm -hmm. and, and it was bad. Yeah, yes. it, yeah definitely, it was. And, and, and the thing is, you know, we've all got a story of what, what has led us down that path and, 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 and caused us to pick up drugs. And, and, but you have to ask yourself, it, you know, my, de my, um, my downfalls, you know, my past or whatever, am I going to allow that to control me in my life? Am I, am I going to use that as a cop-out every time I, um, you know, I, I use it and, and that sort of thing? You have to, you have to stand up and I, I guess it's being a man and, and, or being a woman, being an adult and saying, look, okay, yes, I had things happen in my past might have been a bad relationship, it might have been a bad childhood or whatever, but I, I, I'm in control of my life now and I, I choose what happens from here on. So, um, and I, it's a difficult road and, and you know, um, you, you may need help in, in, this, um, in this journey. So, um, like I say, that's what we're here for. We're here to um, offer you that help. We're here to, um, to share our story and, and, and to point point people in the right directions and and just tell you that there's a better way out there it's um there's a better life there's a there's a um there's your life has a a, a meaningful purpose and it's not ice addiction it's not that at all it's to be the best you can be and it's to, to be of service to to each other and and love one another and 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 this is why we're we're here to deliver that that biblical mes message because that's where it, what falls in line with with um with what we're saying um to 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 um to, to live life to its um to to, to live a full and rich life to, and, and to to the purpose that was meant to be lived. There, there, there is a missing link here. You know, you just don't stop using ice, and then suddenly you're out changing the world, no. <laughs> right? We need to, we need to. There is a process here. First, we need to be abstinent from ice for a period of time to get that mental clarity. Because when we're using ice, it affects the frontal lobe of our brain. Anyone understand that? Yes. Do, do we understand how ice affects the frontal lobe of the brain? Mm. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Okay. So my understanding of ice is it, it takes so long to get out of your system. And it will actually, what it, whenever you start using ice or any drug, yes. it will actually... Whatever age you start using that, it will keep you at that age. And not until 18 months later, your brain, your brain will start redeveloping. There's, um, there's a lot of work done on, on, on this. Um, and 
George Patrikis from Udemy Academy, who's a psychologist, talks about, about how it affects the frontal lobe. Look, I'm not going to go into um, uh, the technical side of it, right? Let's suffice to say that uh, according to the uh, National ICE Task Force, the p withdrawal period for an ICE addict is about 18 months, yeah? And I know for myself in my journey, um, the only reason I have had mental clarity to be able to change my life is because I've had that period of time where I didn't use drugs, you know, and it, it took quite a while and it, almost two years. I have to say two years before I can say, oh gosh, I'm finally over that, right? 100%. But if I picked up during that time, well, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't just simply be a changed person. But during that time, I also had to, to, to work on myself. I didn't go changing the world, right? Because <laughs> um, it, it, it doesn't, you can't change the world without changing the very one thing that you have under control over. That's I didn't right. change the climate. I didn't go out there campaigning for the climate, right? I, I, I changed myself. And how I changed that, and, and I, I just, that's my story, and I'll show you, but how did, you must have had to change yourselves first before you went out putting, uh, helping, helping the Salvation Army, helping the victims of, of the bushfire. De de definitely. Uh, for me, um, they needed to be, if, in order to stop a, um, a cycle of addiction, there needs to be change. So there needs to be change in your life, um, and so that 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 the change your uh, your physical surroundings. Um, you need to. I, I'm a big believer. You need to remove yourself from that that area or that that township or wherever it is. You need to remove yourself from there for a period of time, even because that that influence. It's it's too great an influence. It's too easy to to do, um, fall back into that um, old trap. So that's the first, first thing I believe you need to do. Um, the second thing, and this, this takes time, and, and t in order to achieve the second um, change, um, you need to do the first one. So, and the second thing I, I believe you need to change, you need to change your way of thinking. Um, and otherwise, I, 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 I believe that you may um, have a period where you become sober, but unless, if you can't change your way of thinking, you're still that old creature in a sober body. And it's only a matter of time before you are going to be... Um, uh, well, it may not happen, but I believe you, you need to... If, if you want um, proper um, uh, transformation and, 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 and better your chances of relapsing, you need to change the way you're thinking. I know you got very emotional when you talk about fires and you're crying there, and I really appreciate your honesty and your candor. Um, how, how did this transformation come about from someone who was taking to actually go out there, give your time back to the community? Okay. Um, transformation happened is um, my last stint in jail, I was in there for uh, six months and during that time one of the guys actually said to me, look, you need, you need rehab in your life and I'm like, stuff rehab, mm. I'll just do my time or, or, or. anyway. So I end up going to rehab and by doing the program and changing the way I, like the way I think, the way I act, the way I respond to things changed me at the end of the day, yeah. you know, and the thoughts of, oh, it's all about me. When I first went to program, that's, that's what I was like. It was all about me, no one else, you know. Then that come out of me and now... I'd, I'd prefer to help someone else than help myself because I'm at that point where I can do that. I can help someone who's trying to get the program or get, get recovery, you know. Definitely. You know, and rehab really helped me. So I tried this once before without rehab, without anything, and I failed. Yep. Now having rehab, doing rehab, doing the program, having God in my life has helped me succeed in everyday life. I like that. Yeah. I'm going to interject about God in our life. And, and look, uh, rehab is good to the extent that it gives you that period of abstinence, you know. And I'll, I'll give you a story. I, I was at the New South Wales Drug Court one time and it was this guy who came in and he tested positive to, um, to drugs and the judge said, Mr. Mr. Joe, you use drugs. And he says, oh, Your Honor, I didn't use drugs. And he said, well, you, your own came back positive. And he says, Your Honor, I'll tell you the truth. I was in a family barbecue and um, my brother spiked my drink. 
And the judge said, and the judge said, well, some sounds like someone's not taking responsibility for their action. Is it your honor I'm taking responsibility for my action? I'm cutting my family out of my life. <laughs> you know, there needs to be a change. And, and, and yeah. I'm glad you, men- glad you mentioned God because I am a product of, of a 12-step program, right, which is a God-centered program. And, um, and there is something that I don't agree with it, and, and it's in the sense that um, it talks about the God of your understanding, mm. right? And an addict has, no, has, has a nice addict, especially when you want it like two days, three days, three months clean. Yeah. Like I said, it took almost two years for that, for have, me to have mental That's clarity. Right. What sort of understanding do you have uh, of, of God? And, and, and for a, right. from a creationist point of view, God created us, right? But often, our mental picture of God is actually what creates us. Our understanding of who God is actually what creates us, right. not God itself. Now, what if our understanding of God is wrong? Right? Exactly right. So the rest of a program is going to be wrong as well. Yes. Um, and the, 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 the point is, is that I, I had to, it was a journey for me. You know, it, it was a journey. I didn't, someone said to me before, why, why are the volunteers just trying to anti ice campaign? A lot, of, a lot of them Christians, because you know what? <laughs> They're actually transformed lives, and only people who transform lives will actually go out there and give the time back. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Definitely, and it, it's a message we need to um, to pass on <coughs> as well. But um, yeah, yeah, that 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 that, um, that God of understanding that you talk about, um, it's it's typical of the the, the of an ice addict. It's to um, to <coughs> to make things um, that are you know. That can fit into his um, idea of how things should be, you know. We, and if it's if it's not if it doesn't fit into their life or their way of thinking, then they reject it. So that that idea of the God of my understanding, it's um, it's for me, it's um, it could be anything, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, that's right. It, it's like I, I know a guy who is more well, over two years clean, and his high power is his one of his family members, mm. you know, but. In saying that, there's 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 someone out there who who will guide us and give us that, you know. There there is a high power. So it is a high power, and uh, high power I I choose to call God 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 today. And and the point is, when I was in addiction, when I was in addiction, I I was powerless over my addiction, and my life had become unmanageable. Right? And, and the point is today is that I have to acknowledge that I'm always going to be powerless over those things and I have to hand my will over to the yeah. care of someone who, who, can, who can help me do what I can't do. That's right. Um, and the problem, I guess, I, and I've, I've, I've had, I know a lot of people who are, are trying to give up drugs or in the process of, of giving, drug, giving up drugs, but there is no change... In, in in the behavior and attitude, because simply we talked about self centeredness before, mm. and in recovery, when we flip, well, what is the opposite of self centeredness? When we flip that over, it has to be God centeredness. Yeah. yeah? Yes. So when we flip that, and what I, when I land on my two feet, and what I have is about self discovery, is about self identity, it's about self help, mm. um, it's about trusting another, another addict's wisdom. Then that's not self-centered. It's not God-centeredness. It's still the same self-centered addict thinking. That's exactly right. That's right. Yeah, and, and, and you're right in what you say. And and and, and what if they they're wrong? You know, we and people say you know um, or they talk about a lot of these self-help um, methods and whatnot. If if we knew if we knew the right way and we knew knew what was best for us, we wouldn't be in this. Um, in that cycle of addiction in the first place. Um, so, you know, that, that life in, in God, it, it, you know, um, if you have an opportunity to, to read, you know, um, some, read some of the, um, the, uh, the New, New Testament and it gives us guidelines of, of how Jesus Christ intended us to, to act and, and, and to behave and to think and to um, interact with each other. Um, and, and you know, there's some beautiful things written in there, and and you, you read it and you think, you know, this is a this is a story about love. This is a story about goodness in the world, and you know, if you embrace that, and and and, and you can, um, if you give the Lord a chance, you, you know, 
The, the, having a belief in God is it's believing that there is goodness still in the world. And you uphold that goodness by, by, by partaking in that mm. and, and, and spreading that message. And um, look, that's, that's a message that, that's worked for me. It, it's a message that's worked for Jose and Luke. And, but it's not for ours to keep. And that's why we're up here to, to um, pass that message on. Um, and, and I hope people that... Um, that have tried to, um, to you know, tr tr um, tr try to to stop using, and they've had relapses. Maybe this is a um, something you need to um, to look at and think. Well, maybe this 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 can can work for me. And and I guarantee you, it's it's it, if you open your heart up and 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 you really um, look towards the Lord and give it a chance. I can't see why not, why it wouldn't work for you, because it's worked for me, and, and that's just the truth, and I, and I can, I can only um, speak th those words. Yeah, Ben, I can relate to that, man. My, um, every time something good has happened in my life, I've just left it up to God, and it's come, you know. First thing was, after the fires, I wanted to get a job. I got a job, you know. Next thing... Um, I got, I got to the two-year mark. Then an opportunity arose on getting a property for mm -hmm. recovering. Like I, I brought a property and I put recovering addicts in there so they can transition into the community. Talk, talk more about that because uh, that, that is very, very, very interesting. Because in, in addiction, the best thing we can, uh, our, our, um, our head led us, like our best thinking only led us to homelessness. But now today you say you, you bought a house um, and and you have you know, you're giving back to the community by getting other recovering addicts to stay in this is like almost a halfway house is, is that correct? Yeah, it's similar to a halfway house. It, it's giving them that that sense of security of having somewhere to stay, a roof over their head, and to transition into the community with in a short period mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can have give other addicts the opportunity to go in there. How, how good is that? Mm. How good there is there that there is a testimony. Mm of what actually happens when true transformation... I'm not just talking about giving up ice, right? Because I, I reckon if you put goals in enough, you know, you, you can say, you know, I won't pick up today, maybe tomorrow, two weeks, three weeks, and you put the little goals. But the, the true transformation that actually makes you a different person from the monster that was, of, of yeah. that, that was an ice addict to a person today who's a con contributing member of, of society... Right, who's actually got a purpose in life? Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. We all have a purpose in life. Um, everything in here has a purpose, right? Everything you see around the chair has a that's purpose. Right. The camera has a purpose. The computer has a purpose. How much more you? Right? There has to be more more of you <laughs> than just a person who's not taking drugs. Uh, I, I, I'm going to quote this guy. His name's Andrei Bitov, uh, a Russian novelist, um, and during the communist Russian period, and he said. He had an epiphany one day, right? He's a, he was a uh, comedian, didn't believe in God. And he, he, someday, one day, he just said, without God, life makes no sense. Now, I'll take that in my recovery. Without God, recovery makes no sense. <laughs> Why am I clean today? I have many friends who are addicts, or ice addicts, right? Or still in prison. Why me? Why me? There has to be more to life. And you've, you've discovered that. And, and a lot of people get clean, get clean simply because of that purpose. Um, and it's given back to the community as well. And the beauty of that story also is uh, it's, it's an ex-addict that's able to help other people once he's got himself um, fixed. And, and, you know, that, that's, in line, you know that's, that's what the anti-ice campaign is made up of, uh, um, ex-addicts. And we, we're here to deliver that message in, ho in, in the hope to help other mm -hmm. people. As well. So. What, what stops people from believing in, in, in God? Look, if you're listening to this and, and you, you've got a problem with, with God and, and the concept of, of having to surrender your, your, your will over to the care of, of, of God, um, and, and you keep relapsing and it's not working for you, and you've been, you've been back to rehab three, four, five times, you know what? Maybe your concept of surrender isn't quite there. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Um, I've seen I've seen many people go in and out of rehabs, well Adele House, um, like, and other rehabs, mm -hmm. and I see that they're not entirely ready to surrender their life and their will over to the care of God of their understanding, yeah. you know. And, and if you're not going to prepare to do that, why go to rehab? 
Why take up a bed? Why don't give that opportunity to someone who actually wants that program, <laughs> wants recovery, you know? It, it, it doesn't make sense, you know? If you don't want it, if you only want it just to shut people up, mm. well, you can't. You've got to do it for yourself and nobody else. If you're watching this tonight, you, 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 we've just given you a surefire way of, of, of recovery. And, and a very important word is surrender. It's turned that wheel over, and, and I think the third step, no, I, th- I think the third step in the 12 step program is making a decision to turn our wheel over to the care of God, yeah, to the, to the care of God. And that is really the key, key, key to it. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, it's, it's manifested in, in a changed life, manifested in, in, in changed life, and cer- certainly, certainly for, for me. And I'm doing things today that I'm saying, wow, I, I couldn't have done this mm. on my own because my best thinking only ever led me to one place, mm. right? But when I surrendered, that's when I got freedom. And that's when I can get to do things today that I would never thought, I, I never thought I would do in, in, in a drug you, you know, you, you. Well, I'm, at, I'm at university. university. Um, I'm studying. Um, I'm, I'm so much happier. I, just, and, I mean, we do university together, and I, I could never have um, expected that. I, I'm clean. I wake up in the morning and I say I'm clean. I have a relationship with my mother. I'm not. I'm not a slave to this drug anymore. Um, I, I, I've got a bright future, and I look forward to my future. Um, and I can, and I, uh, it's just, it's, it's such a better life w- without that addiction. And I mean, it's, it's really not worth it. And that's, that's the message that we, we want to drive home. You know, it's not worth it. Enjoy your life and get on with it. Have a rich and full life. Yeah, that, that's it, Ben. Like, if you, you know, the, the gifts of recovery will be having, you, having those people you love and care about back in your lives. Yeah. You know, it may not happen overnight, but eventually it will happen. Like, at the moment, I've got six sisters and one brother. I've only got two of those sisters talking to me and my mum. Mm. But I know eventually, one day, they will come around, yeah. you know. But, you know, and it's like my kids. One day, I will actually get to see my kids again. It does. It takes time and it wasn't easy at the start for me. The first six months, I, I struggled. Um, there was depression uh, modes, m- um, depressive um, moments in my life, but... You know, the good the, the thing about um, accepting good God into my life, I had someone to turn to, confide to, and I had the um, the Christian community to to sort of get behind me. But it it's not it's not as easy as not just stopping. We know that. But oh, that's it. Um, but it is worth it. It is worth it in the end. Um, so if if you do need that help, seek that help. And and it, it it's it's just. The sooner you can do that, the sooner you can start moving towards the life you're intended and were meant to have. Yeah, well, that's it, Ben. It, it, your life will become better. Your life will have a purpose. You won't be waking up each morning or even staying up for a week, mm. sleeping for a couple of days and then using because you'll have a purpose in life now. Yeah. You'll be able to do something with your life and move forward and help those other addicts yeah. who need that help as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't miss that old lifestyle. I mean, even the, 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 the good times you weren't, weren't as good as what you, you know, let's, when you're being honest with yourself, you know, I, I remember the depression. I remember that, you know, you'd be sleeping and waiting for your next payment to come through and it's just, it's a horrible life and I, I, I don't miss it, not one bit. You know, when people say, oh, the good times, there was no good times. Mm. In, reco- in yeah, active it's addiction. It's nostalgic with belief in your head, you, you know, you, the good times. It's, yeah, it's, the good times. It's not, not, not what you think. It, and, yeah. You know, how many lives did you actually destroy, you know? Including your own. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know what? Look, thank, thank you very much for, for coming on the show tonight and, and sharing your story. And you're, only, you're an, a, an example of what can be. Um, one, when we, we abstain from ice. Um, and then embracing that, that change that's only possible when we surrender our will to the care of, of, of God. Um, so thank you very much. And, and that one-hour show went very quick. And I'm, I'm just going to close um, with a passage from, from the New Testament in, in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 to 24. Because if you're an addict out there, this is very, very um, important. And it says this. It says this. Anyone who intends to come with me and I want to say, come with me. Anyone who tends to, to live that life of drug addiction, 
has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat, I am. This is what Jesus says. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat, I am. Self-help is not help at all. Self-sacrifice, on the other hand, is the way to finding yourself, your true self. And that's what recovery is about. So, good night, and um, hopefully we'll see you again in, um, in four weeks' time. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.